Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. This is my client, Adam. I've been cutting his hair for a very, very long time now, like maybe 15 years. Adam is a professional musician. Like this dude makes his living with a guitar and that is so cool. I'm quite jealous of that. It sounds like a fun line of work. What we've been doing with Adam's hair lately is kind of a one length, really heavily texturized, just kind of short mop. It's a little bit kind of a uh, mod rockery vibe. And what's fun about doing this for Adam is it really allows me to push the limits of how much I can texturize hair. You see with different hair textures, if somebody has kind of finer hair, it's really easy to go too far with the texturizing and end up taking out too much hair and just making something that doesn't work. But Adam has incredibly dense, thick hair. And like, if we don't texturize it at all, if this is all cut to one length, it is a hair helmet. So what I'm doing throughout this haircut is I'm kind of just going through with both vertical and then horizontal sections over everything, cutting everything down just a little bit, but I'm trying to remove at, at least 50% of the hair in these very jagged, deep points here. And as I said, on some hair textures, I would never go so aggressive as this, but on his hair, it just kind of works because as I said, when it's all one length, it's a, it's a hair helmet, it doesn't move at all but by very deeply and aggressively texturizing it like this, the hair on the sides and the hair on the top is able to move freely. It's almost like, like it's so densely packed in there that if it's all one length, that the hairs just push on each other and don't allow each other to go anywhere. They kind of, his hair doesn't really grow longer, it grows bigger. And by texturizing it like this, the wind blows and his hair reacts to it. And so what I'm doing as I'm cutting through everything, again, I'm not really taking the length down much, if any at all, I'm just, trying to take out a bunch of weight just deep 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 point cutting hair systematically all throughout the hair and every so often i'll stop and shake the hair and wiggle the hair and see if it's moving and i want to see along the edges here i, I want to see a lot of broken pieces a lot of like individual shards kind of like breaking out from the rest of the hair and here at the bottom where the hair is a little bit too short for me to grab with my fingers i'm, I'm going to do some point cutting over comb i don't even know if that's a proper term scissor over comb point cutting just lifting the hair and cutting really deep chunks out of there. And this is very much a thing that is like, you get better at it with time. Um, in, in that you start to get to know like the nuances and the way you're angling the scissors. Cause very much like the direction you texturize the hair is going to influence the direction the hair wants to lay. And so I'm kind of like, as I'm cutting this, I'm, I'm, I'm making all these points kind of lean in the direction that the hair naturally grows anyways, because I, I want it to look natural. I don't want it to look, too try hard or too put on like I want his hair to look like a happy accident so when the wind blows and it messes up and it starts kind of like shifting and moving I, I want that movement to look cohesive with what is naturally occurring there so now that everything's been very severely thinned out I'm gonna blow dry the hair uh, his hair again is very very dense very thick and it tends to look frizzy when it's air dried so what I want to do with this blow dry is with high heat and high power I'm gonna wiggle it around a lot if you tend to have hair that just looks like a big, thick wall of dense hair, even after you texturize it, if you air dry it, it can just still look pretty, like just hefty. One of the keys to kind of see that texture in there is you gotta cook the hair a little bit. What this is gonna do is seal the cuticle. So once the hair is dry, I'm gonna continue blow drying it with even more heat for even longer. And eventually when the cuticle is sealed, and I say that with finger air quotes, uh, when the cuticle is sealed, the hair will shine and it will move kind of freely and independently. You can see the texture all around the head here is really starting to pop. If you just blow dry it until it's dry, it's still going to be frizzy and fluffy. And so this, you know, you don't have to blow dry your hair every day. You just have to do this anytime you get it wet. And then with his hair, if he just kind of like goes on tour and doesn't do much to it, it's going to fall apart really nicely and, and look really good, like unstyled. It's, as you can tell, it's very much that kind of haircut. It's not a, it's not a styled haircut. It's like, it's messy hair. So as I detail the edges here, I'm, I'm really just refining things down to taste. I don't want to put any clean lines anywhere. As I'm doing his neckline, I'm sort of slide cutting from the inside to the outside all the way around and just knocking out chunks until it looks tidier, but not perfectly tidy because we don't want perfectly tidy. We want it to kind of maintain this uncut look, this like perpetually, I never got my hair cut kind of look. And a lot of my clients who work in front of a camera or on stage or anything like that, they like to maintain these looks that, that don't have crisp hard lines because it's, it's like, like when you're watching a movie, obviously throughout the duration of a movie, people are getting their hair trimmed, but you don't see from one scene to the next, a clean lineup suddenly. And so it's, it's kind of that, that's kind of the name of the game with a lot of these haircuts here. It's like, you want it to perpetually look like you didn't get a haircut. 
So now that everything has uh, been retexturized a little again, I'm going through af after it's been dried, I'm looking back for heavy spots and anything that sits heavily, I'm gonna go back and retexturize it. But now that it's been thoroughly blow dried and thoroughly texturized, I can go in with a little bit of product here. And actually I kind of use it a little bit heavily on him because he has so much hair. I get so used to telling people like, hey, use less product, use less product. But if you have a ton of hair, you could use a ton of product. Why not go for it? Uh, so this is ADH dry. It's available at adhbrand.com. And uh, this is a matte finish kind of clay putty thing. I'm working it through the hair, mostly on the roots and less on the ends. Now, before I show you the end result, let's set up for a little photo shoot here. A common message or comment that I get from a lot of barbers and hairstylists who watch these videos is they say, hey, I don't have the space or the budget for all those lights you used. And so I wanted to challenge myself today to not use any of these lights. So what I'm gonna to use today is a Canon 6D. This is a very cheap full frame body. You can get these for like 350 bucks on eBay. The lens is a EF 85 millimeter F1.8 that I'm starting with here. That again is a very cheap lens on eBay. And I'm just gonna use a speed light. Now I don't use speed lights very often, but it is a very flexible solution. Um, and one of the huge benefits you'll find using a DSLR mirrorless camera is the power you can get out of one of these flashes. Now, when I say power, look at this frozen frame here. This is a very long story as to why this is happening, but the camera I'm recording with, my iPhone, it only saw the flash on half of the frame, which is, again, it's a long story as to why that happens. But in looking at this, it actually shows us a lot that I can break down here about why I like to use flash. If we were to look at the top half of this frame, that's essentially what our eyes see. That's what the room looks like to our eyeballs. But if we were to look at the bottom half of the frame here where the flash is actually picked up by my iPhone, that's what my camera I'm shooting with is seeing. It's seeing a lot more light there. And so comparing these two halves of the frame, you can see that the brightest part of the bricks to our eyes, which are being lit by those tiny little light bulbs up above, the brightest part to our eyes is still darker than the darkest part that is is being exposed by the flash so what the camera sees as the darkest thing is still brighter than what our eyes see and what this means is we're flooding this room with light with this little flash there is so much light in there and it's going to basically override whatever yellow lights or mismatched lights there are in the room because the camera is set up to read that brighter light now here's another thing about having the camera settings dialed in to read the brighter light if you're exposing for relatively dim light, like our eyes are seeing here, you're gonna have to have a high ISO and a wide aperture, which is essentially gonna reduce your image quality. You're gonna get more noise in the image and your, your focus, in, even in focus area, is gonna be a little bit less sharp, a little bit less punchy, as opposed to if you're exposing for very, very bright light, like we're getting out of the flash, you're gonna have a lower ISO, which is gonna give you a cleaner image as far as like less noise and less grain. And you're gonna typically use a tighter aperture, which is gonna give you like a sharper, crispier, punchier image. And so by exposing for that very bright light out of the flash, we're gonna get much better performance out of this camera. And that is like, for me, the most exciting part about using flash is it'll make any camera scream. Now let's talk about real quick what I'm doing with this flash. You can see that I have it turned around and pointed backward. That's because I know that I have a white wall behind me. And so if we were to light him with just the tiny little flash pointed right at him, that's not always the best look. However, if I spray it on this big white wall behind me, what it's gonna do is bounce off of that wall and then the giant wall actually acts as my light source, which is going to give us a whole lot of soft light. And when I say soft light, what I mean is look at the shadow that he is casting onto the wall there from the flash. There's no hard edge on that shadow. And so what this does is it makes skin and everything look really smooth and really even and really uniform. So a larger light source will produce very clean, pretty results on skin. It's, it's excellent light for portraiture. And so by bouncing this flash off that back wall, I have smooth, even light. Now that I've got, you know, one shot like that is decent. I'm gonna keep moving on to see what else I can do. I, um, side note, I had to swap lenses here because that last lens I was using was malfunctioning. It didn't want to focus. But what I'm doing at this point is actually turned the, uh, the flash head to point at that wall to my right. And so now in this freeze frame, that's gonna come up here right now. You can see in this frozen frame that the flash covered the whole frame, but look at how big that spread is coming off the flash. The way you can think of this is that wall at this point might as well be an open door. I like to think of this flash as this is my, my indirect sunlight that I can just slap a door on any white surface. You can see with the light coming from the side, we have still very smooth, nice looking skin, but we have contours now and we have dimension to his face. However, you can't really see his hair. 
Now I could add a second light in there, but I'm trying to keep things simple. And there was a time when I would take a shot like this and think, well, I can just save it in editing. Maybe I'll just like brighten up the hair. But even if I take my time and try to do that really nice, I feel like it never looks natural. It never looks really all that good. So I think what I'm gonna do instead is ditch this shot and try something else. Um, having one light from the side here, even though it is a very large smooth light, just didn't work. So in this room, I have a very short white ceiling and there's just white walls all the way around. In here, I can bounce the light from the top of the room downward, which is gonna put more light on his hair. And now we can actually see his hair. And because that light is just bouncing all over this room and flooding it, we have very clean, even light all over the, the image there. Uh, so that's a shot that I'm happy enough with. So here, what I'm gonna do is I actually want to, like it's kind of against the rules typically to pop a flash right at people because it makes their skin real shiny and it doesn't look very nice typically. But what I'm gonna do to kind of hide that is I'm gonna set my camera to black and white. And uh, these are all JPEGs, by the way, I'm not editing any of these shots. And I'm gonna expose this so brightly that I can see detail in his dark hair. And I'm essentially gonna blow out parts of his skin and lose detail there. But because the image is in black and white, it kind of hides some of the ugliness and one of the things I really like about these mug shots against the wall is if I can get the, the light to bounce off of the wall and light the back edge of his head to cut him out from his shadow, I think that's a really cool look. And if I'm not getting that, I'm gonna move over some and, and adjust the, the direction of the flash and everything until I can get that. But these shots are fun. This is a very in-style look right now to do the kind of deer in the headlights in front of the, the wall thing with the direct flash. Anyways, so there we have it. And, you know, it's like a four minute photo shoot total. It probably took me longer to explain it than it took me to actually shoot it. We have a couple very different looks involving just a single flash on top of a 10 year old, you know, mid-level camera. Thanks for watching. If you're into this sort of content, please like and subscribe.